So today is July 28th and basically what my plan is, is I'm recording all of these videos leading up to my BBL and I'm not going to release them until it gets closer. And so I can kind of post like them all in a group of like deciding to do it, my journey through it, you know, my consultation and then my preparation, the actual procedure, the recovery, months after the recovery, just because I know I'm going to get like a lot of hate and backlash and I want it to be condensed in like a smaller period of time. I don't want it to be spread out because I don't want it to affect my decision making process going into this. I want that to be a decision that comes from me and I don't want to be influenced from outside sources. So today is July 28th, 2021. This video probably will not go live for like months, you know? So currently have my BBL scheduled for November 30th. It's like the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Interesting timing. The timing is interesting because I currently weigh about 180. I would say my weight fluctuates between 175 and 180. I have to be at 170 the day of. And so what I'm gonna talk about today is my thought process on losing weight going into this process and my current um, feelings towards doing this procedure all these months in advance, right? I'm about four months away, right? August, September, yeah, four months away. The first two months has already gone by insanely quickly. So when it comes to um, the weight loss part of it, I am still practicing intuitive eating. Um, I will continue to do that. Um, the one thing that's really interesting about intuitive eating is like, um, I would say that I've never like been so <laughs> quote unquote, unhealthy in my life when it comes to sleep, food, and alcohol intake, but I weigh exactly the same. And I feel like my skin is like the best, not the best it's ever been, but it's like pretty solid. Like I feel like my skin is doing better than it normally does. So I'm a little bit like confused when it comes to the alcohol intake and like the sleep that hasn't been nearly as good. That part's kind of weird to me. Um, but I must say that when I do drink, it's either like a super low carb beer, like 2.2 grams of carbs, 77 calories per 10 ounces, Medaya, local Puerto Rican beer, or it's straight tequila in most cases. So like my sugar intake is not high. With all of the uh, alcohol intake that I'm consuming, there's a direct correlation. When I drink a lot, I don't really crave food and especially I don't crave sugar. When I stop drinking, I want to eat a lot more and I crave a heck of a lot more sugar. So that's an interesting component there because when I'm drinking, I'm not intaking large amounts of carbs or sugar, um, or some people consider them the same thing, whatever. I'm not getting too technical here, but so I'm going to continue to eat intuitively. I stepped on the scale today, 180. I'm like, you know, 10 pounds away from that amount. I would say that I might start taking it a little bit more seriously. Like I want to continue eating intuitively. And I think my current approach is like one month before is when I might go really hard when it comes to like exercising and um, cutting back on calories. It's unfortunate Thanksgiving has to be so, so close to before, but this is the good news. I know that I could drop a lot of weight very quickly. Um, I don't think dry fasting is a good thing to probably do going into this just because with the lack of hydration, I would anticipate that the medication they're gonna give me would make me really sick. I think I might have to take like Vicod in the day of, I'm not 100% sure. So I don't know about dry fasting, but I know that like I could go into it like two or three days before fast. Um, I should probably have a sauna with me just to sweat out so I can walk in there at 170. Cause I, I am capable of really manipulating my weight, although I don't want to. That's like the worst, like it's like the last case scenario. And the reason why I don't want to strict a ton now or going into it is because I got to where I am today with this food freedom and everything because of my not restricting situation. And so I want to maintain that. I don't want to change that, um, but I might start considering it a little bit more a month going into it. I'm not out here like trying to purposely live an unhealthy life. This is a weird thing is that my sleep, my eating, my alcohol intake has like not been that great. My weight has stayed the same and I am like unbelievably happy and like enjoying my life more than I ever have before. Every single time that I've tried to restrict, over-exercise, what ends up happening? I feel no joy, I'm depressed, uh, my mental health is not good. So that's a component of it that's just weird. I'm like, I reflect on all the times I try to be so healthy and I'm spending a lot of time alone and I just really focus on health and that's when I'm like the most miserable and I have no energy. Like I have more energy now 
than I have had when I tried to be super healthy. So it really just makes absolutely no sense. And I'm not like saying that as an excuse or to give myself permission to do these things. I am being 100% realistic, okay? It's confusing. Like every time I try to be healthy, I feel absolutely terrible. And people are like, oh, it takes a month, you know, it takes a few weeks to start feeling good. Okay, well I've done it for like three months, okay? And I still feel like absolute trash. So that's something that I have to take into consideration there. Um, so that's kind of like my approach when it comes to the weight component of what the weight I have to be at when I enter, uh, when I enter the office, the doctor's office. When it comes to my thoughts around it, the first two months, I kind of just blocked it out. I'm like, it's not happening. Like I'm in denial. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to get too excited until it gets closer. Cause it's like really far away this last week. And it was really interesting because I posted a video about 10 things I've learned from intuitive eating. And basically at the end, I think of that video, I talked about that I've never been able to, like I'm very accepting of my body. And it's interesting how that, the accepting of your body is a, is a very inconsistent for me. And I learned that because I said that and I asked myself, do I really mean it? Like after I posted that video and I edited it, I asked myself, do I really mean that? I mean, I definitely felt it in the moment because I do not say things that I don't mean. That is almost always the case. I mean, sometimes it happens. Like maybe if I'm drinking or maybe I'm just not thinking enough about what I'm saying. Um, but oh, like 99.9% .9 of the time, maybe even more, I always mean what I say. And so I asked myself, I'm like, did I mean that? Yes. But then I also realized I can accept my body for what it, for what it is, but want it to appear differently because like I've never hated my body like I've had a hard time accepting it um at from time to time but I've never hated it and I've always been very grateful for my body and the life that it's, it has given me and the fact that I'm like I'm healthy for the most part yeah like I'm in pain all the time and I have chronic inflammation no matter what I eat is what I've learned but um I'm always like I d never have hate towards my body I'm grateful you know that I have a full functioning body for that. I am grateful because it gives me the opportunity to live a normal life. So then I asked myself, okay, like, do I really mean that? And I'm like, okay, yes, both things can coexist. I can accept my body for what it is, but I could also want my body to appear differently because, you know, I thought about how I'm getting this BBL, which is going to change my body, right? It's going to give my body a different aesthetic, um, something that I don't have now, something that I want, something that I desire. So I think it's possible for both things to exist. What has currently happened this week, there's been quite a turn of events. The turn of events have been that um, I have become frustrated with the way clothes fits. And I'm just like, I want the BBL now. And I'm just like looking at like these pool parties and I'm just like, okay, well, I guess I can't go to that party because I don't, my body doesn't appear like these people. So like this week, my mind is just driving me a little bit nuts and I want it way more today than I did when I actually signed up, which is kind of a weird thing to think about and to say, but that's the truth of the matter. There's a possibility that I do this procedure before, probably highly unlikely because the wait list is so long, but if I could match up my caretaker with doing a random trip out to California. And I think if I offer to pay all the money up front, they might bump me to the top of the list. So instead of them going down the line, I'm like, hey, listen, if you have an opening coming up or someone canceled, I will pay immediately, I'll be there. But the problem is that like, I'm not a local, I don't live in San Diego. So it's gonna be hard for me to get there coming from Puerto Rico and match up my whole um, situation with my caretaker. So that is the situation there. I want to give you an update because I've just felt really strong about this and I've been thinking about it. I've been in like pretty deep thought about it lately. And um, I was actually thinking today as I was laying on the beach getting burned, as you can see here, I'm looking quite red. Um, I was on the beach today and I was thinking like, um, shoot, what was I thinking? Now I already forgot about it. What was I thinking? I completely lost my train of thought of, of what I was thinking on the beach, but hopefully I'll remember it in the next video. So that is all I have for you today. As always, go out there and create a life that you love.